Well, welcome back to my little Flash tutorial. Now, last time, I taught you about all kinds of little interesting things, but most notably, how to use motion tweening effectively. Today, I'll be teaching you about uh, layers and sound effects. Now, many of you may be familiar with uh, image editing programs like Photoshop, and the concepts of layers are pretty similar to what happens there. The things that you do on one layer that happens to be up high in the list wind up overlapping anything you do on the lower level. So the uh, light blue stuff I wrote, as you can see, it was placed directly underneath the yellow stuff I wrote on top. It's going to be a handy little thing, but that's not all layers are important for, mind you. As I mentioned before in the previous thing, you can only, when you're doing motion tweening, have one particular object or symbol per layer. So basically what this means is that uh, if you have a box up here and you want to have another box, you're going to have to put it on a separate layer. Now I'm going to make symbols out of these things in just a sec, so bear with me. Blue box. Yellow, yellow. But layers are the most effective way of getting good animation with multiple different objects moving at once. As you can see, both boxes converge into one area. Now that's a very simple little thing there. Not much to it, really. Now, if you'll give me just a second here. Now, I realize how easy it is to get stuff jumbled around if you've got a bunch of different layers. So, let's say you've got all kinds of stuff, like you get a solid box up here that just happens to be overlaying another box that's down here of a different color, which in turn is completely overlapping another box of yet another color. So, you can't even see the red box that I've just created, and isn't that a problem? But that is where these little buttons here come in handy. <coughs> see the eye here? This shows the visibility of a layer. Now if you just click this, an X will go through it and surprise, surprise, the yellow box is gone and the blue box is gone. This will completely hide the layer and prevent you from seeing what's uh, in it at any given time. So you can use this to get stuff out of your way without physically removing it from the stage. Now this little thing here is the lock. When the lock is enabled, that means that you can only that you cannot edit anything on that particular layer. It has been locked. So I can't even touch the blue box down there. I really should I really should have uh, grouped these together in symbols just to be a little bit better because when they're in lines and fills it's easy to erase the border lines here but I digress the lock prevents a layer from being edited so if you only want to edit the top layer or if you just want to pierce through stuff and only edit the bottom layer then you can do that by locking all the layers except the one you want to edit and finally these boxes here if you click on them, they clear out, and, you're in, and everything gets turned into a wireframe on that layer, which means that you can see through it, down beneath, to all the stuff that's there, while still having a good hint of what's going on up here. Now this, is very, this is, again, very useful when you're dealing with highly complicated animations. But there's uh, one other interesting little feature of, uh, of these particular things, these layers and all that. And that is the fact that you can actually add audio to a flash file. Of course, I'm sure that's all pretty obvious to some of you. But one of the main things is uh, before you actually add audio, you've got to make sure you've got enough space in your animation. So you're going to want to extend, uh, extend something out. Audio clips are basically added to a layer in a particular frame. The easiest way of doing this is simple. You just go and find your file and import it into your library. Now, I've already, uh, ahead of time, taken the liberties of preparing a little audio clip from one of my particularly liked songs. In this case, it's Children of Bodom's Roadkill Morning from the Blood Drunk album. 
And it's just a 15 second clip of it, but that's basically all I need to uh, show you guys what's happening here. So, from there, you drag and drop it onto the stage once you've got the appropriate keyframe selected, and it will embed the sound file into that particular keyframe. But there's, it's a little more complicated than that, since there's multiple different ways to actually embed it. And once you've installed it, you can take a look down here at the Properties window, which shows you the properties of the frame you've selected. Now, there's a song here. I mean, there's a sound here. But the main thing about this is, if you look through this box, you'll see there are various different ways to sync the particular song. Event, Start, Stop, and Stream. Now, there's a couple of different differences here. If you choose to uh, put it as an event, it will play once, and even if you stop the animation, it will continue playing until it ends. Or you can even have it uh, try and play uh, multiple different times in a row. Now, if you choose Stream, however, which is the other preferred way, then it will keep playing, but if you stop the animation, the music will stop. And if you start the animation in the middle of uh, where it was supposed to be playing, then it will start from that particular position. So, let me just give you a little bit of a comparison here. Now this is our event method. So, as we hit the play button, see it's still playing? Yeah, it'll still keep playing even if you uh, stop the animation or do whatever. And that's one disadvantage of the thing. And even if you try and play it, like, in the middle of the scene somewhere, well, I guess it, it kind of depends on the events. There are these start and stop events which act a little bit differently. But the main difference about that and that is, you notice if you started in the middle there, it actually didn't play it. Here, however, we've got the stream thing, in which case You stop the animation, the music stops. But likewise, if you start playing in the middle of the animation, you can start it from just about any point you want. All oh, right, I went into the other territory there. But one thing about the streaming thing is that if you cut it off, okay, I'm not sure which one I'm in right now, so never mind that. But that's basically the basics of how to use audio in your Flash files. And if you want to get rid of a sound, you go down here and just select None, and that will clear the sound. Now, I realize I've still got a little bit of time, so I can explain to you a little thing about symbol editing. As you've seen before, you can make symbols out of just about anything that you plop onto the stage, but what if you want to edit that symbol? Well. Thankfully, there is a way. If you right-click a symbol that's on the stage, and you then you can select Edit or Edit in Place. Doesn't matter, but Edit in Place will help show you what it's going to look like along the backdrop. And here you can make any changes to the symbol that you want on the inside, editing it as if it was the main flash file. So I've added those little badly drawn spiky things. Now we zoom out and we see that it's applied and it has changed the entire symbol here so even if I even if I delete oh whoops I actually delete the entire symbol but even if I delete the copy that's on the stage I place a new one and it's been permanently changed and yes you can tween that edit it right here zoom out and it's edited over there so it's a fairly easy way to make a quick changes and if you have a lot of the same particular object in your thing, using symbols can be a quick way to edit them en masse. But that's about all I've got time to explain here today, so I'm basically going to wrap this up, and I'll see you, and I'll see you next uh, video. Sayonara.